Now at six on alert, the new warning for New York's most vulnerable as hospitalizations surge across the state. And the cold is moving in. Storm Team 4 with just how low the temperatures will go. Plus, you think another stay at home order is coming for those of us in the tri state? It's very difficult to predict. One on one, Dr. Anthony Fauci talks to News 4 from vaccines to schools, what he says the future might hold for the tri state. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Natalie Pascarella. And I'm Chuck Scarborough. The surge in COVID hospitalizations has spurred a new health advisory in New York City to ease the strain on hospitals. New Yorkers 65 and older and those with underlying health conditions are now being urged to avoid all non essential activities outside and wear masks at all times. City hospitals have over 1,100 COVID patients, a number that's doubled in just the past three weeks. Two thirds of intensive care unit beds are being used, so only one third of them are available for admissions. The statewide situation is similar, with positivity rising to the level we saw back in mid May. News for us, Gus Rosendale is live on the Upper East Side with more for us on this, Gus. And Chuck, here is another thing. New York City's blood supply has gone down from seven days to three days. Another reminder that tough days are ahead. The mayor's advisory may have New Yorkers on alert, but Diana isn't throwing the keys away to her Upper East Side home. I'm not going to lock myself up in the apartment, no. I mean, even in the very, very beginning, I was very careful, but I needed to go out for groceries. I needed to, I need, you need to live, you need to eat. The mayor's advisory, not a rule, but an advisory, says stay home except for essential trips if you're 65 and over or also part of an at-risk medical group. We are fighting with everything we've got against this second wave bearing down on us. Uh, but we have the tools to fight back. The advisory also tells people, no matter their age, to wear masks at all times if they share their homes and close quarters with the medically vulnerable. It takes a whole community to beat back a pandemic. That's why the commissioner's notice that I'm issuing today is just one step. We need you to carry the message forward to help protect at-risk New Yorkers. Hospitals are bracing for a second wave even before Thanksgiving test numbers are in. PPE inventory counts underway. Field hospital plans at the ready. Hospitalization numbers already on the rise, but so far, the pain has spread. The 3,500 uh, number last time was predominantly in New York City. The 3,500 this time is all across the state. Now that's good and that's bad. It means it's just not downstate hospitals handling the load. Uh, it's statewide, but it also means we don't have the same ability to move resources around the state. Again, the mayor's message today, an advisory. It is not a rule. It is not a quarantine. It is not a law, but it is certainly a reminder that the year may be over. COVID is not. We're live on the Upper East Side. I'm Gus Rosendale, News 4 New York. All right, Gus, thanks for the latest there. We have breaking news to get to. The CDC just voted to recommend giving the first COVID-19 vaccines to healthcare workers and people who live in long-term healthcare facilities. That's once a vaccine is approved by the FDA. Officials believe about 40 million doses will be available at the end of this year. That's enough to inoculate about 20 million people. And here just within the last hour, Dr. Anthony Fauci spoke with News Force David Ushery. He joins us now live from the newsroom. Dave, you have what he had to say about the vaccine, this latest news, and more. And Natalie, we spoke to Dr. Fauci just as that CDC panel was finishing up its deliberations. He himself had just finished a meeting with the vice president and the White House Coronavirus Task Force. And his phone was ringing a number of times during our 15 minute interview, but he kept his appointment with us to speak directly to New Yorkers and the tri state about what lies ahead. Let me ask you quickly I know we've got a limited time about COVID itself, what we're looking at. You were born on Christmas Eve, and, and honestly, it looks like you're going to have a different kind of celebration than you did in past years just because of the pandemic and the restrictions upon us. Do um, you think another stay at home order is coming for those of us in the tri state? You know, it, it's very difficult to predict. I think realistically that we need to continue to appeal to the people to make them understand that we may have a surge superimposed upon a surge. If that occurs, they will, in essence, be forcing on themselves different locations will be seriously considering locking down. I certainly am not going to make a recommendation for the tri-state area 
because I'm not really intimately involved with them on a daily basis. How does that shape your thinking when it comes to reopening schools? You know what we've been through here in New York City recently. The mayor shut them down, and then he's going to reopen them for uh, elementary school students, we think. But with the numbers trending that way, does it make sense to reopen schools? You know, this has been very difficult for parents, for teachers, for the students, and certainly for the elected officials who have to make the decision. You know, as I've said, and I'll repeat it for you, uh, Dave, that the fact is that we should do whatever we possibly can as having a default position that the children either go back to school or stay in school. We know that the degree of transmissibility among children is considerably less than what we had anticipated to be. The best way to safeguard children and to keep them in school is to decrease the level of community spread at the community level. And we often say, you know, close the bars and keep the schools open. Doctor, let me ask you about something that's been such a psychological gut punch for New Yorkers, and that's Broadway. Even those who don't routinely go to show knows what it means for the city. In September, you said it could be the middle or the end of 2021 before we feel comfortable in theaters without masks. So we'll get vaccinations, perhaps, and masks. But anything possible for, before that? Is there a scenario you see where theaters could safely reopen sooner? Is there anything theaters can do? I think that will be completely dependent on the uptake of vaccines by the people of the country and specifically the people in New York. Since New York has many tourists, it probably is going to be the entire country. We've got to make sure that people get vaccinated. So if 75, 85 percent of the people in the country get vaccinated as the vaccine becomes available and the general public, not speaking of the people at the highest priority who have underlying conditions, but the broad general public, the young man and woman, 20s, 30 year old, with no underlying conditions, they will have vaccine available to them beginning in April, likely and maybe sooner. If they get vaccinated through April, May and June and really do a, a full court press to get everybody vaccinated, you can get back to normal or at least approaching close to normal as you get into the late summer and early fall. But that requires public confidence in the safety of the vaccine, which some polls suggest is not as high as it should be. We will hear what Dr. Fauci says about that, about the last time he spoke personally to President Trump, and some other things we need to know about the vaccines tonight at 11. Natalie? All right, some great info there. And Dave, we look forward to that report coming up on News 4 New York at 11, and we will see you then. In Westchester County, dozens of nurses walked off the job today. They're pining to strike for two days to demand the hospital provide adequate protective equipment, ventilation, testing, and other safety protocols. A hospital spokesperson says they've made several offers to the Nurses Association, including wage increases. And the strike, they say, is putting patients at risk. We don't have adequate staffing to take care of the patients. And the hospital can say we do. But when all the people that are actually in that situation every day are saying otherwise, you know, who are you going to believe? Now, the hospital is going to stay open during that two-day strike. It has plans in place for care, like relocating patients to other facilities for necessary treatments. Well, New Jersey is reporting 90 new COVID-19 related deaths. That is actually the highest number of daily deaths since May 4th. Hospitalizations also up from yesterday. More than 3,000 people now being treated in hospitals. Newark is now seven days into a 10-day stay-at-home advisory, and officials say they've issued 25 summonses to business owners for not complying. Grocery stores, pharmacies, gas stations, and laundromats are allowed to stay open, while restaurants can only be open for takeout, and that's until 8 p.m. each night. Officials say the majority of the businesses cited were restaurants for people not wearing proper PPE. In Connecticut, the daily positivity rate has jumped to a hair under 6%. The state also reports another 45 COVID-related deaths and 77 more people hospitalized with the virus. Despite those rising numbers, though, Governor Lamont says as of now, there are no plans for more restrictions.